Imagine you work in global trade and you have negotiated the deal of a century. You personally are responsible for several meetings between privately owned diamond mines and the American diamond industry. Due to the fact that American consumers are demanding alternatives to blood diamonds, privately owned mines have catered to that desire. As you leave work one day, you walk through the parking lot to your car where a group of men in uniform surround you. They represent the government owned mines that you just leveraged out of the diamond industry. They arrest you for treason and crimes against your own government. You are now in a vehicle. You go through town and pass the jail and the courthouse and eventually the edge of town. And now you are headed deep into the mountains. When you arrive at your destination, you are blindfolded and led downstairs where you are tied to a chair and left there for what seems like days. Eventually, the men return and remove your blindfold. They have water and food, which is placed just out of your reach. You are weak and they know it, and this has all been engineered. Unfortunately for you, this is essentially where the terror begins. A masked man enters with a car battery and jumper cables. He asks a few questions, which you do not answer correctly, because he attaches the jumper cables to wet towels, which he places on your legs. He then attaches the other end to the battery. You now have become one of the thousands who have been tortured at the behest of government officials this year. If this sounds like fiction, or too horrible to be true, you would be wrong. Now you might be wondering, where does torture exist today? In 2015 and 2016, an annual report from Amnesty International found that out of 160 countries surveyed, 122 or more tortured as a means of interrogation. What forms of torture are they using? Well, even though they span the globe, the techniques are very similar. Asphyxiation, burning, electric shock, prolonged beatings, rape, mock execution, sensory deprivation, stress position, solitary confinement, threats against family, and even dog attacks to name a few. The effects of torture can include the introduction of personality disorders, paranoia and fear, and an inability to return to life as it was before the torture occurred. Survivors often need help readjusting to life again. So what can we do to help? You can donate to TASSC. This stands for Torture, Abolition, and Survivors Support Coalition. They help people seek an asylum from entities worldwide who employ torture as a tool in civil terrorism. They are a nonprofit group founded in 1998 by Diana Ortiz, who was a survivor of torture herself. Where does your donation go once the coalition has it? Your money will help some of the survivors who pass through TASSC's facilities. Most of the people who come to TASSC utilize social programs created by mental health professionals, including clinical case management, where they develop wellness plans, focusing on the survivor's personal goals. And as one survivor said, when everything in my life is falling apart, my case manager is there to support me, find me a doctor, a place to live, and listen to my pain and make me feel safe. They also have workforce development seminars created by social services teams that help survivors define career goals and make resumes. They also have mental health professionals that help survivors cope in a new environment and develop life skills such as banking, getting a driver's license, and helping with legal cases. Teachers also educate survivors in everything from basic English to math and personal finance. This work cannot go on without your help. Please donate now at www.tassc.org backslash donate. Thank you.